sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present a new series of radio programs, The Clock. Good evening. I'm glad to see you set your clock again for me. I brought you another story. It was told to me by a friend of mine, a watchmaker by train. We were uh, tinkering around together, so to speak, when he decided to pass the time of day with a little yarn. <laughs> Passing the time of day is something you can always get me to do, and if I may say so, I do it rather well. You see, I'm one chap who has lots of time on his hands. Well, according to my friend, the story involves a fellow named Littlefield, a man of some intelligence and ingenuity. He was employed by a broker named Roberts as a personal secretary. Their relationship was extremely cordial. Oh, what time is it, Littlefield? It's uh, 10.20, Mr. Roberts. Sorry to have you, you work so late like this. That's quite all right, sir. I don't mind at all. Well, I guess we're just about cleaned up. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. I'll get it. Uh, Mr. Roberts' office. John? Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's for me, Mr. Roberts. For you all. John. What is it, Louise? What's the big idea? Uh, beg your pardon? Don't beg my pardon. What's the big idea? It's almost 10.30. Why aren't you at home? Well, well I, I worked late tonight in the office. Well, why didn't you call me? I'm afraid I forgot. You didn't forget. You did that on purpose. You knew I'd worry. Louise, I'm still working. I sleep over at that half the day, and you don't even show up for dinner. What do you think I am, a cow? You can't treat me like that and get away but with we'll it. We'll discuss it later. We'll discuss it now. I'm sick and tired... <laughs> I'm very sorry, Mr. Roberts. Your wife. Yes, it, it wasn't important. Mm, uh, how long have you worked for me, John? Fifteen years, sir. Mm, that's a long time. Yes. Somehow it's brought us very close. You know, I feel I can trust you more than anyone else in the world. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. And so I also feel I have the privilege of talking to you like a father. You're in trouble. No, no, no. I mean with your wife. No, not exactly, sir. She's called the office every day now for a week. And, my boy, I know it's upset you. Now, look, I assure you, Mr. Roberts... Come now, we can be frank with each other. I'm a man who understands. I, I, I don't know what you, you believe that I'm in, in, in trouble, sir. But I tell I, you why. You see, I've met your wife. But uh, I've never met that young blonde woman I saw you dining with the other evening. Oh. oh, now, don't look so unhappy. I, I don't hold it against you. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Roberts. A mild flirtation never hurt a man. However, those things can go too far. And I'd hate to see a friend of mine and a trusted employee break up his marriage because of a silly and unimportant episode. And you're quite right, sir. Having never been married myself with no family of my own, perhaps I feel there's something I've missed. I understand. Oh, do you really? Yes. Good. I trust you'll think it over for your own sake. Very, very carefully. Yes, I will, Mr. Robert. <laughs> oh, so much for the fatherly pep talks. Now, if you'll just put this envelope into the office safe, you can go home to your wife. With my apologies for keeping you. Very well, sir. I put it in the safe, Littlefield. You know that envelope contains $1,500 in cash? The Dawson account. I'm depositing it to his name in the morning. Yeah, my boy, what's the matter? S sir? You keep staring at the safe dial. Now, don't tell me you've forgotten the combination after all these years. <laughs> no, 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 sir. <laughs> I was just thinking of something. Yeah, your wife? Yes, sir, my wife. Ah, then you've made up your mind. I think so, Mr. Roberts. Oh. Yes. Yes, sir. Hello, Gloria. Hi, Sugar. I'm sorry, Gloria. I'm waiting on? About half an hour. I ordered a sandwich. You want one? Oh, no, no, please. I'm not having any dessert. i got to watch my figure. I'm liable to lose my man if I lose my figure. You'll never lose me, beautiful. Here we go again. Same old monarchy. What, 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 what do I 
you mean? Go on, tell me how not you are about me. Give me that bunk about not being able to live without me. Bunk? Sure. Because right after you say it, you go back to your wife. But Gloria, honey, I... I've been doing a lot of thinking, John. There don't seem to be much future in it. Future in what? You. You don't mean... How long do we go on this way until I'm old and you kick off and leave her your insurance? Is that all you're thinking about? Insurance? Oh, for love of Harry, look at it my way for a change. She's got the security. I got the romance. But in the end, she gets the last laugh. Yes, maybe you're right, Gloria. You do have a right to think of yourself. Well, what are you going to do about it? You know, Louise won't give me a divorce. So what am I supposed to do? Take the rap? No, no, no. I'm not taking any raps. Gloria, I, I've made up my mind. We're going away. On what? I'll have money. Your wife banks every nickel you earn in her name. You don't earn much anyway. Well, I, I have another source. Oh, yeah? Yes, I can get hold of $1,500, Gloria. It's, it's, it's a good start. Oh, it's a good start. It's even a swell thing. Yeah, well, we'll leave, we'll leave town. We'll never come back. Just just you and I. Mm-hmm. Well, what about your job? Oh, I'm sick of my job, and I'm sick of that old fool, Roberts. <laughs> I don't blame you. Skills have only raised you once in the last five years. Isn't that what you're doing? Yeah, that's quite right. You know, he should have been a lecturer, not a broker. He's always given me good advice. I can find myself another stooge. I'm finished. Why don't we leave, Sugar? Tonight. Tonight? When will you get the doll? Tonight. They say the right man can take 40 years to acquire a superior intelligence, and the wrong woman can make a fool of him in 40 minutes. John Littlefield was no exception to this rule. He had the key to the office, and he had the combination of the safe. The rest was easy, or so he thought. Four, first to 12, back to one. Can do it. Ah, oh, my nose. $1,550 bills. What? John! What are you doing here? I... I, I just returned it. You... You opened the safe. That money, you wanted to steal it. Get out of my way, Mr. Roberts. Oh, John, you fool. Did you really think you could get away with this? Don't you know how obvious it would have been? Why'd you have to come back? I'd forgotten something. Sorry, now I did. I would have preferred you to get away with this, John, than to get you red-handed. Get out of the way. Put that phone down. John! Put it down. You... Come on, let go of me. Come on, let go, you idiot. Let go. All right, now get up and keep quiet. And I want to hit you, but I will if you open your mouth. Go on. Go on, get up, I say. Mr. Roberts, get Mr. Roberts. What's the matter with you? Wait. Mr. Roberts, wake up. Mr. He's dead. Who are you? Hello, Luther. Don't you remember me? Oh. <laughs> well, what do you know? John Littlefield. The boy most likely to succeed. Come in. If you are the last man in the world I have expected to see, John Littlefield. Yes, it's been quite a few years. I'll say it has. Say, how, how did you know where I lived? Well, I, I saw your address in the, in the papers when your case came up in the court. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, it took away my license to practice, but who cares? I still know more about surgery than the whole stupid lot of them put together. Well, apparently they believe that Drunkenness isn't uh, not exactly becoming to a surgeon, particularly when he has a scalpel in his hand. I never like medicine anyway. The hours are rotten. How about a drink? No. I don't have one. No. What? I need you cold sober, Bixby. You need me? How have you been doing since you lost your license? Are you by? Yeah, but not too well, I can see that. Bixby, you, you used to have a small... Uh, private hospital in this place, didn't you? What about it? Uh, do you still have enough uh, equipment to, uh, to perform an operation? You forget. I'm not a doctor anymore. But do you have the equipment, Luther? Just tell me. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's all here. I'm getting rid of some of this. You, you need money, eh? Yeah? Money of business. Yeah, but how would you like to make $1,500, $1,500, Luther? What? $1,500 in cash. Cold cash. I have it with me. What do I have to do? Not very much. It's just perform a 
little operation on, on me. But I... I told you, I'm not allowed to practice. That's why I'm here. I don't want anybody to know about this operation, but, but you. Sit down. Thanks. Well, what kind of an operation do you want me to perform? You were quite well known for your technique in plastic surgery. Mm, what about it? I think you could change my face. You know, everything about me so that... So that even my own wife wouldn't recognize me. You crazy little fish. Just answer my question, yes or no. Uh, I haven't got any time to argue. Uh, could be married. Yeah, good. Well, can, can you graft skin out of my fingertips? To fool a fingerprint expert? Maybe. Uh, I could do that. You, you're quite sure, Bixby. You, you're quite sure you can change me completely. Well, it would require a lot of work. Uh, I could cut the facial nerves and change the muscular appearance of your cheeks. Uh... If I extracted all your teeth and put in a couple of bridges, your mouth would be different. Yeah, well, what else? I could change the shape of your nose, give you a scar across scar one eyebrow. Very good. Yeah. I would even change the expression of your eyes. Uh, your hair could be dyed gray. I might give you a permanent bald spot on your head. Yeah, good, good. That, that sounds perfect. Yeah. I could change your little face so you wouldn't even recognize yourself. And would you do all this without asking... Any questions? For fifteen hundred dollars? Yeah, fifteen hundred dollars. You'd be taking a chance. I have to work without a nurse. I don't care. I'm used to taking chances. You must be very anxious to avoid the police. I said without asking any questions, Bixby. Tell me, is it a, is it a deal or isn't it? We'll operate tonight. <laughs> Time, like everything else, is relative, according to our thoughts and surroundings. To a man who is happy in his work, it has wings. To a fugitive from justice, it barely moves. And three weeks of convalescence have made John Littlefield a very impatient man. How do you feel, John? For the love of heaven, when are you going to take these bandages off my face? Well, let's see if we're ready. I think we are. Yeah? Yes, yes, it looks like this is well, Let's it. get them off. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me do it. Hurry up, for heaven's sake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're going to get quite a surprise, little Phil. Am I? Well, you see yourself in the mirror. Have you, have you done a good job? I've never done better. I've earned my money, too. Yeah, all right. Cooped up in this house with you for three weeks without a drink has been quite a trial. Look, you can drink yourself to death after I leave. <laughs> yes, no doubt I will. Ah, uh, here we are. Now, let's have a look at you. Well... Look in this mirror over here. Hey, hey, Bixby. How do you like it? Well, my man, you, you were right. You know, it, it, it's even hard for me to recognize myself. There are only two people in this world who will ever know who you are. <laughs> the patient and his eminent surgeon. Now, um... I'd like to get paid. Hi, I'm, I'm going to pay you, Bixby, but... Uh, what, what, suppose we have a little drink first? Oh, Dr. Bixby has never been known to refuse. <laughs> okay, let me pour it in, huh? Oh, where'd you find that bottle? In your closet. I made certain to hide it from you until the job was done. <laughs> uh, you're quite a character, little Bill. Yeah. Here we are. Let's drink up and have it straight. Well, here's to a great future. For both of us. Yeah, especially for you. Well, uh, Bixby, what are your plans? Do you intend to blackmail me? Oh, no, 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 not really. That won't be necessary. You see, I uh, expect you to uh, voluntarily make a small donation every now and then, and, you know, for all Lang Syres. Yes, yeah. Well, I hate to disappoint you. Oh, don't let that bother you. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's the matter with me? Having a little trouble, Bixby? I... My eyes! Uh, I... Yes, uh, you had a little vial like poison on your shelf over there. Uh, you know, I, I picked it up a few days ago for just this contingency. <laughs> it was in your drink, Bixby. No, you, you never get away with this. Oh, don't be ridiculous, man. When the body of Dr. Bixby, the eminent surgeon, has found the case will be listed as to the suicide. No. It'll be obvious that you killed yourself because of shame. <laughs> well, well. 
You said there are only two people in this world who'd ever know who I am, Bixby. You know something? Now there's only one. Yes, John Littlefield had it all worked out. His timing, so to speak, was perfect. A few minutes later, he dropped his hat and his coat in the river. The coat contained an identification, his own. And from that instant onward, one John Littlefield ceased to exist. And then to make certain he'd be safe for the rest of his life, he made a bold and daring move. Something I can do for you, mister? Uh, yeah, well, yes, yes, you can. They told me downstairs that I'd find the uh, chief of detectives here. Yeah, that's me. Oh, good, well, uh, I was standing near the waterfront a little while ago, and, uh, I, I saw a man jump in. Mm. Uh, you know, I had a gun in after myself to save him, but I, I can't swim, you see. And, uh, there was nobody else around. Did he go under? Oh, yes, yes, he did. Yeah, but there was a top coat he'd taken off just before he jumped. I, I brought it along. Well, this is it here. And, and there's a name inside on the pocket. Let me have a look. There you are. John Littlefield. Yeah, I can describe him for you. He, he was tall. He, say, say, about my height. He had dark hair and, and uh, regular-looking features. And we've been looking for that guy for weeks. You have? Yeah. His buzz died less than a month ago. Oh, fancy that. A rich old guy named Roberts. Heart attack. Then Littlefield disappeared. Did, did you say heart attack? Yep. Found him in his office in the middle of the night. Too much work. The old gent didn't know when to take it easy. Yeah, but uh, look, why, why have you been looking for, for Littlefield? Well, the old guy didn't have any family. He left Littlefield all his oh, dough. Oh, amounted to almost uh, half a million bucks. Oh. Yeah. Then the lucky dope takes a powder with some dame. His wife told us. Hey, what's the matter with you? Uh, uh, nothing, man. Yeah, I guess it got you when you saw him jump. Okay, sit down and take it easy for a while. Go on. Yes. I'll send out a squad to start grappling for the body. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> well, you're, you're not going to like this, but... Uh, well, I... I got to admit it was only a joke. What? I... I did, didn't see anybody jump at all. I, I'm John Littlefield. You don't say. I was Mr. Robert's secretary. It, it's true, I ran away because I was sick of my wife, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm back now. You, I, I'm back. What do you take me for, mister? A cluck? No, look, no, look you've got to believe me. I, I, only, I, I gave you that story about seeing somebody jump in the river because I was... Because you what? Well, I... I, I look, I, I got a fix of Littlefield right here in this drawer. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we got it from his wife. Now, just take a look, Sonny. Take a good look. Yeah, well... If you and this picture got anything in common, I'll eat it. The envelope and all. But, but, but look, yeah, sir, you, you don't understand. I understand sir. enough to slap you in jail for fraud. I got half a mind to do it. You must be crazy to think you get away with something like this. Now, get out of here, you cheap chiseler, before I really get sorry. Oh, all Come right, on. all right, all right. Look, you don't believe me, but I'll prove who I am. I, I'm, I'm going to prove it if it's the last thing I do. Gloria. Who are you? I'm John Gloria, John Littlefield. You're crazy. Look at me, Gloria. Look, look very closely. Don't, don't you see? Can't you recognize me? I've never seen you before in my life. Get out. But, but you don't understand. Look, I've, I've, yeah, I know. I've changed my face. I, I, I look different, but I'm, I'm still John Littlefield. Gloria, you've got to believe me. My boy, listen to my voice. Can't you, can't you... Get out before I call the cops, you lunatic. Get out! Time has a way of meeting out justice, hasn't it? Listen, as the clock ticks on for John Littlefield. Louise... my apartment. I'm your husband, Louise. I'm John Littlefield. Get away from me. Sh surely you can identify me. Listen, you're my own wife. I I know. I, I changed my face, but it, it, it does, doesn't change my identity. Louise, you've got to see that, don't I you? I never saw you before in my life. You're not my husband. My husband is dead. No, he's not dead. They only think I'm dead. How did I get the key to the, the apartment? You know what? I had it with me all the time. It's my key, that's why. And, and I'm your husband. Look, L Louise, for heaven's sake... You've got to believe me. You're crazy. You're crazy. Look, listen, listen, listen to me very carefully. Now, if, if I can identify myself, we left half a million dollars. Robert's left it to me, Louise. To me, half a million. It's enough to live like kings the rest of our lives. Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, yes I recognize you now. Of course, John. I know you. No, no. Look, you're only saying that because you're afraid. You, you, you don't really believe me just, at all. Look, just let me... Don't go near the phone. Oh, 
Please, mister. I never did anything to you. Leave me alone. I haven't got any money. Take whatever you want and leave me alone, please. Oh. Should have known. Bixby did a good job, all right. If I, if I can't convince you, I, who, who, who can I convince? Look, uh, hello, look, you remember me, did Detective Henderson? Do you remember me? I sure. You're the guy who said he was little. Yeah, yeah that, that's right. Well. I also said I, I could prove it to you, and I can. I, I can identify myself. Oh, now that's very interesting. Y yes, I can. Yeah. Well, matter of fact, we've been looking for you, Mister. You have? Hmm. Tell me about this uh, identification you've got. Yeah. Well, instead, in the excitement, you see, I, I forgot I even had it. But mm. it was, funny thing, it was on my finger all the time. What was? The, the ring, this onyx ring. You see it? it well, I was a fool not to think about it before. Let me see that. There's an inscription in a, in a band. Yeah. See, it, it, John Littlefield from Ralph Roberts. Uh -huh. yeah, Mr. Roberts gave it to me years ago. He's very fond of me. That's why I left me his money. I was very faithful to him. He liked me like a son. He he, he wanted to pay me. Now, look look at the ring. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking. Well, doesn't it convince you? Sure. Of a lot of things. Come on. What do you mean? Come on. Where are we going? To the city morgue. There's something I'm going to show you. Over here, mister. And pick up that sheet. No, I go don't want to. Go on, go on. Pick it up. He's been dead for three weeks. Terrible. The car in a figure he was slugged and pushed into the river just about the time you told me you saw him fall in. Oh, no. It isn't easy to recognize his face, is it? That's horrible. That's what water does to a buddy after a while. We found him in that shirt and those shorts he's wearing. But we also found his coat and hat in another part of the river. With identification cards. You mean? There's Littlefield, mister. <laughs> you took his ring and his wallet. No, and took his cashing on his inheritance, too. No. Why, of all the crusty schemes I ever heard of, this one takes a but cake. How can you be sure it's Littlefield? Why do you identify a corpse you never saw before and then call me a liar? His Why wife you... identified him, mister. His wife? Sure. You couldn't. And if you think she's going to change her mind, you're deafier than I figured. Now, when she comes into that half a million dollars Littlefield got from his boss... That's impossible. I don't believe it. You're trying to fool me. You'll believe it, mister. No, no. When you get the chair for the money of John Littlefield. Everybody's trying to get the money. I won't let them have it. I want the money. I'm going to keep it. It's mine. It's mine. story of Mr. Littlefield as recorded by the clock. Rather ironic, isn't it? Imagine being convicted for the murder of yourself. But then, justice has its own peculiar way of balancing the scales, and always in good time, those scales meet out their just and logical punishment. Well, I see my time is nearly up and I must hurry off. I'll be seeing you again even sooner than you think. On a mantelpiece, perhaps, or I may look down on your Sunday morning from the steeple of the church. In any case, when we meet again, you can rest assured for one thing, I'll be right on time. The Clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. Written by Lawrence Clee and starring Hart McGuire as The Clock. You heard Joe McCormick as John Littlefield. Ken Wayne as Dr. Bixby. Frank Waters as Robert. Georgie Sterling as Gloria. Pat Martin as Louise. And Grant Taylor as Detective Henderson. The Clock is directed by John Saul. A Grace Gibson radio production. <laughs>